<clears throat> good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you live in this wonderful world. It looks to me like we have an audio problem. If there's anybody there, please tell me if there is because the sound does not seem to be coming out. And I don't know why. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. That's very kind of you, if I'm your favorite. Oh great, I'm glad you can hear me because for some reason the audio isn't working on my system and that's always scary. The levels are going up and down, but there we go. Hello, Julia. <coughs> Hello, Jules Viggs and Alan. <coughs> Excuse me. It's always a little bit unsettling when things go pear-shaped straight away. So welcome to another PosiPix Live. I'll be giving feedback and coaching on some images from the November competition, which was themed animals before announcing the winners of the three <coughs> £50 runners-up and one £500 winner for both the student and experienced categories. Posipix competitions are a collaboration between clickersnap.com and myself, Mike Brown, who does photography courses. I do photography courses. Your entry fee for the competitions are helping us to support the Legacy of War Foundation to help people rebuild their lives following the traumas of war. You'll find links to all this good stuff in the description area below. I hope everyone has been well. I hope everyone's had a great week. I've been blown away by the incredible level of the entries. In a moment, I'll be giving some feedback and coaching for both of those. Um, and I look forward to doing that. Quick announcement before we get going. We're gonna be taking a break next month. Uh, we're gonna be looking at ways we can evolve PosiPix competitions moving forward. So please keep an eye on the PosiPix site clickersnap.com and if you've opted into the PosiPix newsletter then we will of course be keeping you informed. So let's just have a little look make sure all my screens are working and everything is in the right place. I think it is. I think we are probably good to go. So let me get myself set up which I'm not. Forgive me. And without further ado, we will start looking at some of our student level entries, which were absolutely amazing. I am completely astounded by what people come up with, you know, and the creativity which people put into these competitions. I really loved the way that there are some incredibly expressive images going on here. I mean, how could anyone not like Happy Truffle here? David, I really do like this shot. I think you've put a lot of work into it. I think you've obviously thought pretty hard about it. Forgive me, I need to just move some stuff around because I have got some stuff in the wrong place, which is not good. Oh dear, I am making a mess of this, aren't I? Anyway, <coughs> bear with me. Good, right, I've got that sorted. You've got some great energy going on in this shot. You really have. Um, you know, dogs bounding, happy blue skies. You've done a great job technically as well by managing to maintain a very shallow depth of field on a moving subject. That's not an easy thing to do. That is when you need to probably be employing such things as focus tracking. I don't know how you did it with you pre-focused, but either way, it's a really great happy shot and I totally get it. You've got your animal bouncing around and having a great time. I of course have just done something wrong again because I was completely flustered by the fact that the wrong thing happened when we started. I think this was kind of amusing as well. Tammy, I've just done it again. What an idiot. I love the fact, yes, you've got a great picture of your dog and I know you love your dog and I'm sure he or she is a really great companion. Photographically, it's not really giving it much. We need a little bit more light. I think you're very slightly underexposed here. And also the blanket and <clears throat> just the position of things, it's not really working 
terribly well as a powerful sort of an animal photo. Nonetheless, thank you so much for entering and for supporting the competition, for helping us put a bit of good into the world. Right, I've got to reset that again. Right, I'm not going to get it wrong next time. Let's just keep having a little look through. Margus, Margus Ritalu, Ritalu. I did like this. Again, you've got that very, very shallow depth of field. It's really clear, it's really obvious what we're looking at and why we're looking at it. We've got a great little expression going on <clears throat> on your blackbird as well. You've caught a really good little moment here. Just that little moment when he turns his head to the side. How cool is that? The use of the shallow depth of field is also telling us where to look. And I think you've been very brave in positioning your subject quite small in the frame. So we've got a feeling of where the bird is and giving them a little bit of space. But you still maintained our intention, sorry, our attention on precisely where it is we're supposed to be looking. Great effort. I thought this was a lovely shot as well. A group of ducks playing in the water by Yahan Yu. I think it's a really great little moment, just the way we've got, you know, the little ducks sort of swimming along. Now, the thing is, your subject is very, very close to the middle of the frame. And I think you could have also done with bringing the exposure down just a touch. It looks a tiny little bit bright on my screen. My monitors are calibrated. In fact, I only did them a couple of days ago. So I do know they're spot on. <clears throat> All monitors are different. So everybody will be seeing this slightly differently. I think possibly we could use a little bit less of the foreground. What's going on down the bottom of this shot, across the bottom here? If you were to just get your hand and just sort of like take off maybe, I don't know, the bottom half of what's going on at the bottom. So the ducks are sitting just a little bit lower in the frame. Personally, I just think it improves it. It's always worth paying a lot of attention to our composition. Just thinking how we position the subject within the frame. I do very much like this sort of blue, misty feel to it, though. Well done. Cat Eclipse by Mark Danaher. <laughs> Cat Eclipse. I think the thing going on here, Mark, is we looks to me like <clears throat> there's been a lot of burning going on in Photoshop or Lightroom or something in the post-production. And the halo isn't really helping you. The eyes are strong, the eyes are powerful, yes, but the shadows are very, very blocked up here. I think you could have got away with a little bit more, ex more exposure, but also probably not done the burning on the background. I don't think it needed it. Maybe that's the look you were going for. Maybe that's what you wanted to achieve. And if that's the case, well, that's absolutely awesome. That's great. <clears throat> However, as a standalone image, I do think it could be a little bit brighter and it could have done without that post-production going on in the background. We've got another really great shot here from uh, Margus. Um, some more hot duck action going on here. But what a great little moment. I love the way you've caught these little drops of water just sort of flicking off this little beak here. I'm not so sure you needed to be quite so tight in. I think a little bit more space just to sort of tell us a bit more about where the ducks are would have worked. I'm only talking a little bit here. I don't necessarily mean that you need tons and tons and tons of space, <clears throat> but just a little tiny bit more would be good. Technically, great exposure, lovely colors, absolutely bitingly sharp. And I like all those little droplets of water. You've got some nice light happening here and it all sort of balances out in a very pleasing fashion. Again, another one from Margus. We got a lot from you, but I just have to sort of pick out one more because I think there were some great shots. I love this dozy looking polar bear. I wonder where you were. I think it's really quite exciting. 
the light is quite nice. Unfortunately, this bright area of light here is a little bit, is drawing our attention away from the bear's face. Maybe there could have been a moment when the bear turned his face slightly further in that direction <clears throat> towards the light, because then I think our attention would have been more strongly focused on the bear. And the reason I picked out these three, and I'm giving th one person three lots of feedback here, is because I think there's something for everybody to learn within this. These are little things that we all do. Decisive moments happen in all types of photography, not just in street photography. It can happen in everything. And as we scroll down through, you can see there are some really, really lovely shots. Sonia, I need to just have a little look at this one with you as well, because we've got a great expression. <laughs> Isn't that a great expression? <clears throat> this time, and I, and I do like the fact, sorry, that you have included some environment. We know where you are. I think what could have helped you here is a slightly shallower depth of field. So a wider aperture and a focus very precisely on the dog because the background is also very, very sharp. And I think had the background been very, very slightly softer, it would bring the attention more on the dog. There's some nice light. I like the way the light's coming around the dog. I like the dog's expression. I like his body language. I quite like the position. But I feel that it's just a little bit lost because there are very similar color tones going on in the background to the dog itself. So slightly shallower depth of field, maybe even just a little fraction less of the surrounding, and I'm only talking a fraction here, could have just helped focus our attention a bit. But yeah, your exposure's great, the colors are lovely, it's pin sharp. Thank you so much for entering and supporting. We've got another, I think this is a beautiful choice of black and white, um, from Ella Andlevic. It's very atmospheric, it's very sort of, it's very moody. Now swans are difficult things to photograph because when the light hits their wings, the feathers burn out, the white can really, really go too far. And I think this is what has sort of happened here because the swan's face is so, so dark. We've got detail in the feathers, but it's at the expense of the swan's face. I love the black and white. I love the mist coming off the water. It is nice and sharp. I like the reflections in the water. Maybe, had you managed to just click the shutter a moment earlier when the swan was a little further back because the swan's just coming into shade and I think this is what is really darkening the swan's face. The moment you click is really, really important. And I think that could have helped quite a lot. I'm also unsure that your tilt is actually helping. I don't know if you did this one on purpose, <clears throat> but I don't think the tilt is, is really doing you any favors because you frame the shot beautifully. I love this going on around the top, the little bits of foliage just sort of hanging in there, the way that also the reflections are sort of holding the whole thing together. Great effort. Kirsten. I think this is a very accomplished bit of photography, actually. I do really like that shadow of the dragonfly reflecting through that very, very shallow water. I think it's really rather lovely. To me, there's just one thing that's kind of spoiling it a little bit, and that's this stick. I know it's so frustrating, isn't it? that there's a stick in the way. And I get it, you couldn't necessarily just reach in and pluck out the stick and get the shot at the same time. But these are also things just to sort of watch out for. The number of times we end up missing about, you know, the number of times we end up missing shots, we grab a shot and then we've got to move fast and we suddenly realize there's something really, really distracting going on in the background. Trust me, you're not alone. This happens to all photographers, professionals, amateurs, the only difference between a professional and an amateur is a professional charges money. It doesn't necessarily mean they're a better photographer. I know some awesome hobbyist photographers who are way better than some professionals that I have met. It's one of those very, very frustrating things that we have to deal with. Sasha John. 
you've been a regular, many of you have been regulars for a long time. And I very much like the way you have managed to separate your heron out from the background because that is a noisy and distracting background. Those boats are very noisy and distracting. However, you have managed to do it. You've also got some quite nice light. It's coming from slightly behind the bird, hence that little bit of light, that little sort of highlight just around the top of the head. It's not all coming from directly in front. It is very, very fractionally behind as well. It's an interesting shot. It's a good shot, but again, I just think there's a little bit too much going on in the background, but you have really worked hard to minimize it by using that shallow depth of field. And this is all we can do. We see something, we want to get a photograph of it, and then we've got to work with what we've got and maximize the opportunity. And I think you've done that very well here. Please bear in mind that my coaching and feedback here is intended to try and help everyone. And if I sound harsh, well, I'd be a bit of a useless coach if I didn't push you. Antoinette Suarez. I really like this. I think it's quite fascinating. Now, I'm not entirely sure. <clears throat> is this a composite or is this something you actually captured? If you're here, I'd love to know. I'm watching the comments on my other screen here. That's why I look away every so often. Um, I'd just love to know. Because if this is a, a, a real life capture, I think it's really quite interesting. How did you capture that bird in that light with that smoke? Or is this a composite? Is this something you've made? Either way, it doesn't matter. It is a pretty powerful image. It's a pretty striking image. The light on the top of the, the wings sort of works very, very well with the rays of light that are coming down through. Um, the smoke, where's that coming from? It's quite intriguing. It is eye catching and it makes you stop and look at it for a moment. And that is not an easy thing to do in the fast moving Instagram world in which we live. We're bombarded with images continuously all the time. It's not easy to make someone stop and pause, but you did make me stop and pause and probably others too. Thomas O'Neill, I liked your soaring shot here. I think I like the colors. Um, I'm guessing you've gone for a bit of a sepia look. Uh, and it kind of works. Now I think your exposure is a little tiny bit too bright because it's so difficult when you have a white bird because we've got quite a lot of burn out here. Now I'm not against a bit of a burnt highlight. Um, in some cases they absolutely exist in the real world such as sparkles on the water, the filament in a bulb when you look at street lights and things like that. They do burn out. I am not part of the highlight police but I think your exposure could possibly have come down just a little touch here. There's a great sort of feeling of freedom. My coaching to you would be, could you have composed slightly more to the left? Because the cloud is sort of balancing the bird, but we've got so much space empty on the right with nothing much going on. I think maybe if you could have positioned the bird more to the right, and then maybe have a little bit more of the cloud in the left. So we've got bird and cloud. I think the two would sort of really create a great balance within the shot. But either way, it does work, and, and this sort of sepia tone color, yeah, I think it works well. It's engaging, it's interesting again, because it makes you look, is it a black and white? Is the sky really that color? Was, you know, what's going on here? I liked it. <clears throat> Let's just scroll down again a little bit further. Stella Fag, very, very majestic expression going on here moonlit. Is this really a moonlit shot? I'd really love to know if you're here, Stella. Um, the light is very beautiful, truly beautiful. What more can I say? The expression is wistful. Uh, technically, perfectly done. Perfect exposure. I'm really intrigued by this as to how you shot it. Um, I think it is a very engaging and interesting animal portrait. Mostly because you've got the catch light in the eye, the positioning, everything. It just sort of came together very well indeed. Congratulations. Just need to move some things around. My screens are getting rather cluttered. I have so many things open whilst doing this. But hey, that's just the way it goes. 
checking comments. That's what I was doing. Derek Lindsay. I like this, but it's just a tiny bit too busy. It's a really intriguing capture. And again, wildlife, animals, they're not easy things to photograph and to get them to stand out because wild animals, what do they do? They hide very, very well. They are so good at hiding and camouflaging. And I think what's going on here is the natural camouflage is really, really, you've got to look a little bit before you notice the deer, I think. Partly there's this bright area going on back here. I know, it's a total bummer, isn't it? Because you've got a great expression, you've obviously thought about your composition and how to shoot and shooting through the, the bracken. There are some lovely colours, but unfortunately, the subject of the shot is just a tiny bit lost. It's a great demonstration of how well animals can hide. They're little buggers, they really are. There are some lovely shots here, aren't there? It's another from Sasha John. This works well. Why does it work well? What is it that really works well? Simplicity. Simplicity always works very well indeed. Also, we've got colours that are in love with each other. Reddy oranges and green. They always work well together. It's a simple image. There aren't loads of different colours. There aren't loads of different shapes and stuff going on. We know exactly where to look. The light is really nice too. I love the way the light is just sort of caressing along our little crickets back there. Great shot, really nice macro shot. It's also not easy to get as much of the bug sharp as you've managed to because when you get really, really close in with the lens of the camera, the depth of field shrinks to being absolutely minute, even at your smallest aperture. Depth of field isn't simply an aperture thing, it's a distance to subject thing. Aperture is merely the fine control of that. So you must have been using a very small aperture, I would imagine. Well captured. I think Mavis has got a great hairdo. Alison Mortimer Durant. I do think Mavis has got a stunning hairdo. And let's face it, Mavis is flirting. <laughs> what more can you say, you know? I love the droplets of water. I just like that one eye just sort of looking at us. <laughs> I think it's a very engaging, captivating, and highly amusing image. Very well shot. Use of black and white, I think, works incredibly well with this too, because of, look at all those shapes and textures in that crazy looking hairdo. What a friend of mine once would have referred to as a let's fool around hairdo. I think it's a very, very nice shot. It's really engaging, it's very well done. Coaching to you, I don't really think there's much more you could do with this. You, the background is sort of nice and soft, we know where we're looking, everything just sort of comes together. Congratulations, very well done. I think we have another cheeky little dog shot coming on here. <clears throat> Antonia Nika. I love the position of the dog, the dog's body language. It's dainty, isn't it? We've got a little bit of dainty stuff going on. There's a sort of a bounce and a prance to it, which is not just going, here's a picture of a dog. We're getting a little bit of a feeling of who that dog is, a little bit of personality. And I think this is what really makes a picture. We don't want to just take a picture of something. We want to take a picture about something. And I think you've kind of done that well here. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a technical issue going on. Mostly, the focus is a bit too far back. It's not that it's out of focus, it's just that it's focused in the wrong place. The focus is sort of back here around the hair at the back and it needs to be up here on the face. I know this is a hard thing to do, <clears throat> which is why I was so impressed with our first dog shot because an animal moving towards you between focusing and actually pressing the shutter, the dog's moved, and shifted itself out of focus. So you probably did have the eye sharp when you focused the shot. However, dog moved. This is another reason it's important to kind of understand how to use your camera, because if you could have used maybe single point focus combined with continuous, the tracking mode, 
and then had that single point on the eye, as long as you've got pressure on either the front or back button, whichever you choose to use, the camera will track that point. So as the dog's moving towards you, it's always in focus. Then you can concentrate on the body language, the decisive moment. Also, I don't think you needed to crop this quite so tight. It is a nice shot. It's a great bit of body language, but it feels very constrained. It feels a little bit like dog shut in a box. But congratulations, it's still a nice shot. Some great light going on here <clears throat> with a bit of chicken action. Ruling the roost. Maybe it's a rooster. Maybe it's a different type of action. Dorothy Grenwich. Grenwich. I've seen quite a lot of your shots over time. And it's a powerful picture. I get that feeling of ruling the roost. You have said something about your subject. You have managed to say, I'm the ruler. Look at that beady eye. We're being given the beady eye. The backlight coming through the tail feathers is really nice too. Sure, we've got some burnout on those tail feathers and it's always annoying when that happens, but it can happen. But the thing is, the red is so strong, it's still overpowering the backlight. It's overpowering those white bits. So we're paying attention to where we should be looking. And that, of course, is our bird's face. <clears throat> it's a great shot. Now, just now I said about our other little dog needs a bit more space. Somehow this one, it just works better. The long lens, the previous shot was long lens too. But it just works with this type of shot. Focal length does so much more than merely bring far off things closer. It also can add a mood and a feeling. It's a compositional aid. Composition and focal length are best friends. And in this case, in this shot, in saying something about this subject, I think the tighter crop actually works very well. This is the problem. There are no rights, there are no wrongs. There is only what you like. As a few people have said to me, you know, how do I develop my own style? <clears throat> well, you don't. You photograph what you love. You photograph what you find engaging and interesting. That is your style. Some will like it, some won't. That's all there is to it. We've got a great bit of goat action here from Amy Drager. And I think this is a great shot. This is so goaty. I grew up on a farm. I kind of know how these little buggers behave. <clears throat> I like the way you have shot straight down the back of the shelter using the ripples of the tin. Again, shallow depth of field, slightly longer focal length. We know where we're looking. Also, of course, the goat is the strongest part of the picture because we always look at the brightest bit, the white bit, and that works incredibly well. It is a nice shot. I think in this case, I'd just say give it a bit more space, but that's just me. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm right. I think it's a great shot. I do like it. And I think there's something very cheeky going on here again, also from Amy. <clears throat> It just makes you smile, doesn't it? You know? The way you framed that up, the way you've just caught that moment and moved your body. Composition is not a camera function. It is an arms and legs and hands and feet function. It's a bending your knees. It's a moving left and right and twisting the camera around. Horse is backlit. <clears throat> so the light is sort of coming down and slightly towards the camera. with A little bit of a shadow going on down here on the railing. That's what's telling me that. But it's those eyes just sort of peeping through. I think it's uh, great fun. You're saying a little bit of something about your subject. You're showing a little bit of the character. And that is not an easy thing to do by a long stretch. <laughs> Disaster man, Luca Nudo. Okay, I kind of get what you're saying. <laughs> One small cat, how can one small cat make so much mess? And I liked this because you're saying something about the personality of the cat. This cat is a vandal, <clears throat> I get it. Unfortunately, as a photograph, <clears throat> excuse me, it isn't working that well because there's just a little bit 
too much. Now the mess sort of works, but it's things like the picture frame at the top, the corner of the chair, I think that's a high chair, and something hanging on the back. I don't know, maybe if you could have got down lower so your lens is really close to all this mess that's been ripped up and thrown all over the floor. The pink cushion, the comforter or whatever it is hanging off the side and the cat just sort of laying back going, I did that. That's where your subject lives. Always be very careful to look all the way around the viewfinder. Check everything. I get it. This looks to me like it was taken on a phone. No problem with that. Phone is a camera. So what? Work with what you got. That's fine. But I just think there's a little bit too much distraction going on around the edges. Let's just scroll down through and look at one or two more because there are some lovely shots here. There's no question about it. Look at those green eyes on that cat. Isn't that lovely? I'm just going to choose one more and then we're going to go take a look at our experience level category. <clears throat> whilst on the subjects of cats, Honor, Owner, I'm not sure how I pronounce your name. I get it, the cat's being patient, but unfortunately our cat, the animal theme, is a little bit lost because the cat is completely dominated by all these bright areas in the back of the shot and also by the guy in the corner. It's unfortunate because I can tell from the body language of the cat what's going on, but it didn't quite work. How could you have improved it? I'm not entirely sure you could have done working with what you had to work with in this case. It's always a tricky one. It's always a tricky one. But thank you for entering nonetheless. I thought there was something really interesting going on here. Xin Yang, the Monkey King. Come on, load in. Why isn't it loading? I maybe need to try again. See, we're doing this for real. Mistakes and everything. Here we go. Xin Yang, you've got a lot of potential, I think, with this. Because again, I feel you're saying a little bit of something about your subject, about your monkey the king you called it the monkey king and i get that because we're looking up that gives our monkey that powerful thing from the shape of this i'd say again it's a phone shot you've got that great sky going on <clears throat> you've got complementary colors we've got a sort of yellows and oranges and blues in that sky but our monkey's a little bit lost monkey being right smack in the middle really in this case and i think there's just a bit too much going on below the sky is powerful. If you get your hand and just kind of like run it up across the bottom and maybe take it off just above the foliage, the plant, then I think it works an awful lot better. So maybe if you just tilted the camera up a little bit when you took it, maybe zoomed in a bit. Don't forget, you can still zoom in on a phone. You can just pinch and just zoom in a bit and click, zoom in a bit, tap, and you've got your shot. But I did like it. I think there's all sorts of stuff going on here. <clears throat> Evgenia Calagera. I thought this was great. I love the way you did this in silhouette. I like the relationship between the cat and either yourself or whoever it is. And I'm not sure whether whoever is holding the cat is going, ah, you bugger, because it's <laughs> dug its claws in because it's excited and it's having fun. Or whether it's just like a happy moment. Either way, I think it's quite good fun putting that against a sunset and just sort of doing it all in silhouette. There is a relationship happening here. And I think that's good fun. I like it. It's just, I know I said I'm only going to do one more, but I just have to scroll through just a few more. I mean, look at that gorgeous squirrel by Sandy Fru. I wish I could talk more about all of them, but I can't. <clears throat> I love this um, angry looking cat here. We've got a lot of cat shots, haven't we? Kimberly Murgatroyd. <laughs> We're again saying something about this cat. This is one pissed off cat, isn't it? Let's face it. There is no question. 
I think the tight crop kind of works. You could have maybe done a little bit more space at the top because I get the feeling that cat's back is thoroughly arched. But I like the way you very carefully managed to capture the focus just in the eyes. You've caught a great expression. That cat is saying something and it works. Thank you so much for entering and sharing it with us. Exposure's all good, everything's good. I like the color tones because it really brings out the mouth and the blue eyes because everything else is pretty much different tones and shades of, of much the same color. Again, keeping things simple really does work very well indeed. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit further. We'll get on to you more experienced photographers. There are some great shots going on down in here, no matter what. Um, I do need to say something about this one. This is genuine. I mean, yes, I've looked through the shots, I've looked at your pictures, but I don't pre-select what I'm gonna talk about. I think this is a great sort of cheeky little shot of your dog. Um, I like the way you've used a wider lens and got in close. It's a shame about the dog lead. That's all I would say. There's two things here. I think the tree being just sort of cropped off because it doesn't look like it's a very tall tree. I just think maybe if you could have come back and slightly to the left, tilted it up a bit, maybe just caught the top of the tree, it would have helped because you've got great body language going on in the dog. Love your sky. Shame. It kind of looks like you sort of slung the lead on the ground quick and taken a photo. I'm not saying that's what you did, but it kind of looks a little bit like that, which is a shame because there's some great colours and some great tones. It's also a shame there isn't a little catch light in the eyes, but to shoot against a sunset like that, I think it's light reflecting off the snow is about the only thing which is pulling it up. But it does say something about your dog. Thank you for entering. Great effort. Okay, I am now going to move on. <clears throat> I love the cows. I do love the cows. Bees, look at all this good stuff. Look at it all. Anyway, let's move on and go and have a look at our experienced category. Let's see what you guys have come up with because there are some lovely shots as always. Julia Reich, Reich. Resh. <clears throat> Great shot of a frog. I love the fact that it's a blue frog. I like your composition. I like the way you've sort of managed to frame our little blue froggy between two little bits of something coming diagonally across the edges, leaves, foliage, whatever it is. Unfortunately, our beautiful little blue frog, which you've got so gorgeously sharp, is being a little bit overshadowed for me by that red in the background that bit of red foliage it's just unfortunate <coughs> frogs move maybe frog moved as you were taking the shot maybe if it was against the green i think it would have stand, stood out more but there's some great lights backlit you see those little ridges of highlight running across the body here they're giving it a great shape and a great texture thank you so much for entering i do think it's highly engaging We've got some very nice <clears throat> rim light going on here, Diane Harper, with your pony picture. Unfortunately, I think the scene is just a little bit too contrasty. I love the rim light. I like the breath. The backlight is bringing out the breath. <clears throat> but that bright, bright, bright sun is kind of overpowering things just a little bit. Also, the fact that Horse's bum is chopped off. It's not really helping that much, which is a shame. Um, but I like the way you've thought about this. You've thought about the backlight. You've thought about how could I do this? How could I make this work? Maybe if you'd moved to the right a little, you could have perhaps included more horse and possibly put the actual disc of the sun behind the tree. That might have worked. Maybe if you could have bent your knees, got down lower, because you see the shadow of the horse coming towards the camera, always like a shadow coming towards the camera. Maybe if you could have lined it up so that that bright sun was right behind the horse. So we didn't have quite so much of a strong bright thing in the sky. We may have got a little bit of sky detail <clears throat> and the horse would have been in the brightest area. And then if it's silhouetted 
fine. Okay, you wouldn't have got the rim light, I know. It's always a cost and a payoff and a trade-off. But good effort, I can see you really thought about it. And this isn't easy. I was out doing one of my photo ride videos the other day, trying to get some shots of some horses. And they were down in a valley and the light was coming behind, they were rim lit, it all worked beautifully. <clears throat> By the time you sort of got the camera out and changed the lens, blasted, things have moved, haven't they? And then there's a bright sky in front of them. If you hang around my channel, you will probably see me doing that in a few weeks' time. I really like the duck taking off. Um, I like this little row of blackbirds. I think it's a nice idea. Great animal behaviour. They blackbirds or are they rooks or crows, Diane? I'm not sure. Looking at that beak, I'd say that's a crow. I like the way you've shot along as well, along those posts. I think that works very, very well indeed. I like the way we're just looking at one bird in particular. Something which is usually needed though with um, animal photos is to try and get a bit of eye shine. There's a tiny little bit there, but not much. I very much like the pastel shades too. What could you have done to improve upon it? I'm not entirely sure because you've got the gap in which you've got to shoot into in order to get the bird you focused on sharp. However, I can't help but feel if you were the other side of the fence, the same side as their faces, it might have worked a bit better. I don't know. It's a hard call. <clears throat> but nonetheless, it is a great effort and I can see how hard you've thought about it. Right, there's loads of cat shots here. You guys love your cats and it would be really interesting to talk more about them because there are, but we can't do too many cat shots, can we? I like this one, Alan. <clears throat> I think it's a very engaging and interesting photograph. I like the relationship. I like the expression on the woman's face as she's looking at this. I'm afraid I'm not good with birds and animals. I'm not sure entirely what <clears throat> sort of bird it is. Bird of prey, obviously. Somebody tell me, please, in the comments. Is it an eagle? Is it an osprey? Is it a... Hmm. The backlight is working well. Look how it is separating out from the feathers. I like your composition, the way you've just sort of held it together very beautifully. The softness of the background, the backlight, the expression, it's all just sort of coming together well. You've caught a great moment as well, just as the wings are outstretched. I don't know if it's a balancing moment or a landing moment. Either way, it's a very nice shot. Formation puffins. What's not to like? <clears throat> I think that must have taken a little bit of capturing, Kim. Kim Skirton. <laughs> and it is a great moment. Again, it's nice and simple. We've got really, really clear subjects. I love the fish in the beaks, the position of the wings, all of it. It's a slight shame. And boy, am I being picky here. <clears throat> I hope I'm helping you. I'm not just sort of sounding like I'm pulling you to pieces. That little overlap between them. But to capture a puffin in flight and get just the puffin sharp, I think that is quite a thing to do. Um, maybe shooting on burst mode could help. I don't know if you did shoot in burst mode, but allowing them to fly through the frame, depending on what sort of camera you've got, if you have a mirrorless camera or something like that, you're shooting 11 frames a second or more in which case you can then just sort of and just choose the precise moment when that we're in the right place because to do it in one click, boy, that's difficult. Stuart Anthony says he thinks it might be a Harris Hawk. Thanks, Stuart. Nonetheless, it's an engaging photograph. Um, I wish it was one of mine. I think it's great. We've got a little bit of naughty dog going on here too, haven't we? Nicholas Smith, someone's in trouble. Hmm. Let's hope it's not you or me. Again, you've done a great job of telling a little story about the dog, you know? It's an amusing, humorous sort of an image. Uh, the light's really rather nice. The expression's great, the body language, the way the head's cocked on one side. I can't help wondering, did you make a noise to try and attract the dog's attention? 
when I was trying to photograph the horses the other day, I was making clicking noises, horse noises, I was making whooping noises, I was doing all sorts of silly things, trying to get the blasted things to stop eating grass, look up and start posing, get their ears forward. <clears throat> and I find it often works with a dog. You make a cat noise. <coughs> or that wasn't a cat noise, it was a dog noise. Make a cat noise, you know, and just sort of little whimpery dog noises. It will often make them turn around and go alert and you have that little moment. Great shot. Nicely done. Oh boy, so many lovely pictures. Just so many lovely pictures. I love your snow goose, Crystal Bartholomew. You've been entering competitions and our feedback groups for a long time. It's beautifully framed, really nicely put together. Again, some great light. <clears throat> the only reason I'm going to give you a little bit of a critique is to me, it looks to me like that goose isn't quite sharp and that's a shame because you've caught some great body language and some great colours. What's not to like? But somehow it doesn't look quite sharp and I've seen quite a lot of your stuff. Very, very nice indeed. Thank you anyway for entering and joining in with us. I think there's a lovely little thing here also, Crystal. It's just it's a different take on it, which is why I want to shout it out. We've got a relationship, haven't we? It's about animals, but this is going beyond just an animal. This is now going into a relationship with an animal. You can just feel the love, can't you? You can see the way the child is holding the rabbit. I love this rabbit. I love this rabbit more than anything in the world. We're saying something about something. We're not just taking a picture of something, we're taking a picture about something. Beautiful light as well. <clears throat> Guessing it's coming from window, and window light just works. Can't help but think of a child I knew in Australia who had a rabbit. And this child loved that rabbit too and would hug the rabbit so hard and the poor rabbit's eyes would be bulging sometimes. I felt so sorry for that rabbit. Great shot, nonetheless. Thank you so much for entering that one, Crystal. <clears throat> Let's scroll on down, look at a few more because I can't believe that it is quarter to eight already here in the chilly UK. Peter Gregory, I like this relationship that you've created with these two ponies. <clears throat> Again, it's another great little moment. Um, <laughs> ponies playing, foals playing. The light's a little bit harsh, but hey, you've got to work with what you've got. I like the way you framed it. I like the, the whole sort of interaction going on between them. It is, it is a great moment. And again, you've said something with a relationship in it, and that is a tricky thing to do. It's a shame top pony's ears are back because it just looks like he's being a bit grumpy but nonetheless it's an interesting shot well captured the light isn't really helping but hey you've got to work with what you've got it is so tough you can spend ages in a situation like this watching the foals play just thinking please turn around come on please just turn around please just turn around <clears throat> then they're in better light and then they don't do it it's just the way it is nonetheless great capture nice moment Thank you for entering. <clears throat> Alfred, I like your little monkey here. We've got a very engaging stare, haven't we? What sort of monkey is this? I mean, this draws your attention straight away, doesn't it? That monkey is checking you out. There's no question about it. Very nice sort of gentle light, and it's still slightly backlit. You can see from that little highlight in, in the hair. But it's that stare straight into the lens, which is working so well. The eyes are very bright. There are catch lights. Those little highlights within the eyes, they are really drawing attention. I don't know whether I would rather see more monkey. I'm not sure about the arms being cut off where they are. I'm being picky because this is such a great shot and it is so well put together and so technically well done. I can't help but thinking maybe if we lost, do you see the little black lines where the arms are down here? I can't help but thinking if, if they were just missing, 
it might help. If it was much more of a head and shoulders shot, or if it's a little monkey, we could see maybe the whole monkey, because I think that stare is so strong, it would still rivet our attention and say quite a lot about the creature itself. Scrolling on down, we've got a lot of monkey action here too. Janine Ray, this says a lot too. What does it say to you? I don't know about you guys, but I know what it says to me. I like the light. I like the way the dog is looking off out into the distance. Look at that light. It's evening, isn't it? That golden sort of light. The way the dog's looking out the window. I love the way you've included just these little bits of window pane, actually. I think it works. Because that dog is thinking, I don't know if I want to go for a walk. Why won't you tell? I want to be out there. I want to be playing. I want to be doing stuff. I don't want to be stuck in here. That's the feeling that I'm getting from this shot. And I think it takes a little bit of doing to capture it. I quite like the way you framed the shot. I like the way you've sort of cut, you know, just the side of the dog's face off. I don't think we need to see what a face, back of the dog's head. I still think it's a great shot. I think it's beautifully done, but the light is gorgeous. It's the light which works. We go straight to the ear and then down the muzzle and then out the window. It's a little journey. So difficult to get these things absolutely right. If it was the muzzle that was in focus, would it work as well? I have no idea. You'd have to have them side by side. Either way, it's a really nice shot. Thank you so much for entering. More monkey action going on here. Your lonely friend, Mark Nunez. <clears throat> to me, it's an interesting shot, but the colours just look a little bit overdone, I'm afraid. I'm not sure about your bright sky either. I know it's difficult. Monkeys in the shade, sky's really bright. These are all the things as photographers that we have to fight against. We have to fight with, we have to work with, we have to find ways around them because you've got this lovely line. For me, and this is just for me, the colors are a little bit too much. Now, as I've said earlier, do what you like because that's your style. Some people will like it, some people don't. Personally, I find that light, that, sorry, color, a little bit too much, but that's just me. Other people, please, in the comments, if you like the very colorful bit, please just say so. You know, let's give, um, let's give, sorry, Mark, some support here, <clears throat> because it is a nice moment, and I like the way you framed it. Ten to eight. How can that have happened? So many lovely shots that we could discuss. I think this is nice because it's just a little bit different. Generic winter. Again, it's really, really simple. We know exactly what we're looking at from the position of your spider. The light's really nice, it's kind of soft. We've got the dark spider in the brighter area of the shot, which is really helping emphasize what we're looking at. The fact that there's all these little nooks and crannies where a spider lives, I think is quite interesting. I like the way you framed it, so there's something in each corner which is also herding us towards the subject. And again, very, very simple colors. Most of that shot is made up of the same tones. We've got blacks and oranges, and that is pretty much it. I think it's a really intriguing shot. I think it's very well delivered. Thank you so much, Jan Eric. Scrolling on down through, there are just so many, aren't there? I mean, judging a competition is never an easy thing to do. Joanne Lauro, you've entered a few of our competitions because I've seen your name before. But isn't this a great little moment? We've got these patterns and textures and shapes going on <clears throat> which are superb and then remember we were talking about you look at the brightest part of the picture in this case the brightest part of the picture is the face and i love the way that face is kind of framed by the bodies and the flippers the dozing seal i do think it's a really great shot the light's nice it's technically spot on it's lovely and sharp We've got this peaceful feeling, haven't we? Again, it's not just a picture of, of something, it's a picture about something. It's about a dozing seal. You're going to tell me it's not a seal in a minute, aren't you? Because I'm hopeless with these things. Joanne, I think it's a really lovely shot. I'm sorry it hasn't gone any further. 
<coughs> um, we've got a tortoise, which is not quite the right way up. Now, I'm guessing that's an image rotation thing. Um, I'm not going to enlarge it, but I just need to mention it, uh, Jilly Gales, because I just think it could do with being the right way up. It's just one of those things to think about. I get it. It's one of those technically annoying things, isn't it? Let's scroll on. Well, look, let's just have a look at Irene. Sorry, I've met Irene on many occasions. That isn't actually Irene. It's not a selfie. But it's a great moment, Irene. I really do think it's a great moment. Little Joey just sort of poking out and really paying attention to you. I think it's uh, a very well captured moment. Very much so. Shame the tail's just a little bit caught off. <clears throat> but hey, I'm being harsh on you because I know you take some really great shots. But the key here is that it's a great moment. Capturing the Joey, just sort of really like, what are you looking at, you know? <clears throat> Nicely done, thank you for entering, Irene. Look at it all, there's just so many great shots. Darren Page, I do like your sheep. Isn't that just, a wonderful sheepy shot. It's just engaging. Now, all those elements have come together and they've worked. You know, we were talking about putting animals against the sky. Yeah, well, in this case, it works because the sky is grey and cloudy. It's got a shape and it's got a texture to it. We've got backlight going on. That's what this little line of light is along the top of the sheep's back. We've got a really great moment. Look at the body language, there's something going on. They're also interesting sheep. Look at those dreadlocks. Look at that shaggy hair. Isn't that just absolutely awesome? I think it's a beautifully captured image. I really do. I like the way you've shot from slightly low down. So we're looking through the grasses. Sheep on a hilltop, that's what it says. And something has caught their attention. They're not just sheep with their noses down being boring. Those are interesting sheep. I just think it's a lovely shot. Um, I'm sorry it just hasn't gone further in the judging round. But hey, there we go. <clears throat> Thank you, Darren. I think it's a lovely shot. If you haven't been and visited these galleries, then please do spend a little bit more time than I can because just moving through these, I can't spend time on every single one but I would so love to because some of you are just awesome photographers I mean Gary you've entered some great shots here um, I just love I'm gonna have to talk about more than one and why they work I mean what a great wildlife shot that is isn't that just cool the light is what is really working. Yes, we're looking at otters, but it's not just because they're otters. It's the light. Look how they stand out from the background. See this little rim light, this little brighter area going around the muzzle. The light is coming from slightly behind. The attention, they're both looking in the same direction. Just capturing this moment. Look at the position of the paws. You know, these are real lovey-dovey otters, aren't they? I think it's a beautiful shot. I really do. <clears throat> I think it's um, such a shame it didn't actually go further in the round. But there we go. Also, I'm just going to have to talk about your elephants because I'm indulging myself. I love elephants. Black and white was so the right way to go with this. Black and white works really, really well with textures. If you're kind of learning some of this stuff, then think on it. Black and white works well with textures. Okay, elephants are mostly grey. Depends if they've been throwing red mud and dirt and stuff over them and dust bathing. But elephants are such gentle, lovely creatures. And I think you've captured that feeling here really rather beautifully. <clears throat> they are so gentle with one another and with people as well. Sure, you piss an elephant off, you're going to know about it. And of course there are conflicts in the world between the human and elephant population. Elephants need to eat a, lot and eat a lot and human beings grow stuff. I have photographer colleagues who have worked extensively on photographing elephants um, and documenting the lives of some of the great tuskers and I'm privileged to know these guys. I'm privileged to have spent quite a lot of time around elephants. But it's just a beautiful shot. As a photograph, why does it work? 
we've got all those textures we've got the light is just washing across that wrinkly skin and that's what's bringing the textures out and that is enhanced with the black and white but also you have captured a great moment you're saying something about something not just taking a photograph of it you're saying something about a relationship that is what is engaging in photography in my mind I could be wrong <laughs> Mr. Ernest <clears throat> I think this is kind of intriguing um, because I like the tones I like the position of the bird and even this bright bit down the back here in the corner it's kind of odd but somehow I quite like it because I don't know about you but I still notice the bird I can't explain it now this looks like it's a very very low resolution image I'm not entirely sure maybe you shot it out the window um, looks like it's snowing and I get that cold feeling from it I don't know if you put a filter on there possibly to me it looks like it was taken with a phone possibly an older phone I'm not sure but I do quite like it and I like the position of the bird down in the corner I think that's quite good fun let's just skip on down through a few more because we are approaching we are within our hour but you know Janan Ray <laughs> You see how important moments are. I pick out a lot of pictures with moments, and I think this is a great moment. Look at the, <laughs> look, at the look in the eye, the chew, the sort of, I don't know whether we're being arced at or, or what it is, and I'm not sure if this is an alpaca or a llama. Again, I'm not a total expert on that. I love the position of the face. I like the expression a lot. And again, working with animals is so hard. It really is. Never work with children or animals, and it's true. <clears throat> the fact that you've managed to capture this between those fence posts, or telegraph posts, or whatever they are, is really great, because I'm not sure it would work so well if one was growing out of its head. Not easy. I can imagine you dancing and moving around trying to do it. It's a great moment captured. Thank you again for entering. Let's have a little look just down a bit further and just see what else there is because there are so many. Please, please, please come and join in. Janan, thank you for entering so many images. There are some beautiful ones here. Um, there's some gorgeous light here. Jane Kilbride. How can we not like the light going on? On Millie. It's such, again, such a simple shot. Millie's engaged in something. Technically, perfect. Perfect exposure for the light. The light is coming around Millie's muzzle and her face. It's lighting up the eyes, and that's the important bit. But we've still got some shadow detail going on down around the collar, around Millie's neck. It's a very, very accomplished animal portrait. I think it, it's very well done. It isn't easy to capture these things all in one go, to capture the moment, the expression, the light, all of it. Very well done indeed, Jane. Okay, I'm just going to have to stop talking about everything because there are such great photographs going on here. And I think we need to move on to announcing our winners and runners-up. <clears throat> so please bear with me one moment whilst I get myself sorted out. It's not working terribly well here. Oh, I can see what it is. Forgive me. So, our student runners up in our animal themed Posipix competition. This time the judging was slightly different because we tried something new. It's always worth trying things. You don't know if it'll work. So, <coughs> This was done partly on voting, partly on judging, and I am still very, very impressed with these images. And I think this one from Conrad um, is a great shot. I really do. Conrad Clavon. Clavon? Clavon? I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. But 
you know, it's beautifully done. These are not easy animals to photograph. And I very much like the way we've got this softness around the hair. I believe that's a hair. Again, I am not an expert on animals, am I? I am a bit hopeless for a country boy. But it's a very engaging shot. It has a great feeling of nature. Even though there's lots of interruption going on between the viewer and the hair, it just works. I like the way you've been brave and positioned the hair right in the middle of the frame because everything that's going on around the hair is working to draw attention to it. And part of that is because of the body language. That hair is alert, looks to be aware of you, and I'm going to guess you only had a fraction of a moment to be able to capture that shot. Not easy. Someone who did a one-on-one -on -one day with me years and years and years ago wanted to photograph hares and it took him months of going up to where they lived, getting them used to him and slowly sneaking closer and figuring out the right angle. I think it's a very, very accomplished and well shot photograph. Congratulations, Conrad. You are the first of our 50 pound runners up. Our next winner, runner up, sorry, in the student category Here's another sheepy shot. Julia Wong. I just, there's something about this which I think is, is great. I like the expression of the sheep. They look so dopey, even though they're alert and paying attention to something. It's another great moment. You're saying something about something, not merely taking a picture of it. There's work gone in. Look, we're shooting at sheep's eye level. That means getting down low. We see a sheep from above and you've kind of got in close to using, I don't know, it's not a wide angle lens, but it's not a long lens either. It's giving a very natural sort of perspective and look, and something is capturing the sheep's attention. I like the background too, the trees. It's telling us a little bit about where these sheep are and what they're doing. Um, yeah, I, I like it a lot. I think it's a very, very accomplished photograph. Congratulations. Our next runner up, is Cindy Van Vuren. <clears throat> I've been intrigued where you shot this, but it is a really beautiful picture of a leopard. If you're, you guys are students, you should be really, really proud of yourselves. And I'm taking you, of course, on trust. You know, you, you know where you are on your journeys, but these are very accomplished images. We've talked about light. Look at the backlight. <clears throat> the leopard's face is rimlet that little halo going on is absolutely great the background is quite bright but it's not too bright the way you've used a shallow depth of field to really bring our attention onto the leopard i like the tree you've sort of anchored the shot with a bit of tree trunk a piece of wood on the right of the frame and then the tree branches and foliage on the left i think it's a really great shot i love it and so our winner of the student category, uh, the winner of our top prize is, oh, I'm doing that TV thing, aren't I, is Mark Danaher. <laughs> what a great shot. I'm just intrigued by how you even managed to shoot it. I think black and white is a great way of doing it. The railway tracks take us on this journey through the shot, the fox trotting along one of them, I just think is, is really interesting. It's this sort of, you know, nature versus mankind thing. And, and, you know, seeing a fox run along a railway track, I've certainly never seen it. I don't know if you have. But I do think it is a very engaging and well-accomplished image. Black and white is a great way to go. I like the way you've positioned your subject within the frame. Square seems to work very, very well for this too. Um, the light's great. Again, it's coming from behind. How many times have we looked at an image tonight and just said the light is coming from behind? Backlight, it works well. Light is everything. So congratulations to everyone, all of our winners in this competition. I think you've done incredibly well. Our £50 winners and of course our £500 top prize winner. So now let's go take a look at our experienced category and see what we've got going on in there. So our first is Glen Welch, with a very atmospheric bit of otter action. 
the light is really quite fascinating. I'm really intrigued by this. I don't know if you're here, um, Glenn. I would love to know where that light is coming from. Not that it matters where it's coming from, it's there. The mistiness is atmospheric. The way that the otter is just sort of standing in that water and sort of is looking enwrapped by something. Those little plants and things. There's something very magical and sort of fairy tale-y about this shot and I think it is really beautifully done. If you're here, Glenn, please, please, please tell us. I'd love to know where that shaft of light is coming from. If it's something you managed to put there yourself. If you did, brilliant, congratulations. I think it is a smashing shot. Congratulations on being one of our runners up. Our next runner up in our experienced category <clears throat> is Jennifer Tate. I think this is a very strong shape. It's a very powerful shape. It's, it's sort of eye catching because it's dramatic. I think that very strong side on thing is working very well. I like the way you've positioned the bird, the way it's coming right out of the corner of the frame. Having the black behind the white works well. Technically it's spot on. Very tricky exposure. We've already discussed swans and how it's so easy to totally burn out the feathers. And the light is coming slightly behind and slightly above and, and that's brighter edge. It's just holding it together but it is so strong because the background is slightly darker, longer lens, shallow depth of field, but it's something about the power, the position of the bird within the frame, within the space. It's a very graphic side-on shot and it's powerful. I think it's great, I really do, I, I love it. Well done, congratulations, Jennifer. It really is a great shot. Our next runner up in the experience category. <clears throat> It's someone we've seen before, in all honesty, but you are a very accomplished photographer. There is no question about it. Eric de Verne. What an amazing, what an amazing magical moment to capture that. Look at the bee laden with pollen. Look at the way this bird, forgive me, somebody please tell me what sort of bird that is. I'm, I'm hopeless with animals, aren't I? But... I just think it is such a magical moment. It's so powerful. Bird is thinking, do I eat it? Do I want to eat it? Or will it sting me? There's, there's a relationship. There's an interest going on. And I just think it is beautifully well done. Congratulations, Eric. You are very good at this. And, you know, guys, look at photographers who are very good at it and think, how did they do that? Don't just look at the picture and go, OK, it's a picture of a bird and a bee. I'm going to take a picture of a bird and a bee and it'll be like that. It won't. Look at the light. Look at the, the focal length has been, that's been used is long. The aperture is very wide. The shallow depth of field, it's been shot from quite close to. Because if you remember, we we're talking about aperture isn't the only thing that controls depth of field. It's distance to subject. So Eric is quite close to this subject, or at least the camera is. Maybe Eric has thought up a way to have the camera fairly close and have something there and remotely operate it. There are so many ways to reach the same destination. The thing is, it's all about us, the photographer. We are the ones that create the picture, not the camera. Never forget that. Eric, I think it's a really accomplished shot. I really do. That's a BBC wildlife shot, if ever I saw one. I think it's great. And wildlife, animals, not an easy thing to do. And so, our final, our winner in the uh, Posse Picks animal challenge our final 500 pound winner is davy dixon <laughs> i just think it's a wonderful shape and it's different and there's body language in it and it is so carefully composed and put together this peacock sort of wandering off a bird's ass as somebody in the office here said to me the other day but it is such a great one. Look at those beautiful shapes, those beautiful natural shapes. We don't have to see the bird's face to understand what it is and what's going on. The colors are so subtle and gentle, technically spot on, absolutely pin sharp. Why this? Well, it draws attention immediately. It's like, whoa, what is that? Oh my word, look at that, isn't that great? 
this peacock strutting away. Look at the position of the feet. Again, decisive moments are important. I don't know if you're here with us, uh, Davey. If you are, then I'd love to know, were you shooting in burst mode or was it one of those things you just caught that moment? Because I think if both feet were on the ground, it wouldn't have energy. That one raised foot, the bird is walking off. It's just kind of, you know, they kind of slink off. They kind of strut, don't they? They're kind of like cool. <clears throat> and that's what's going on here. But it is so beautifully composed. Look at the gaps, look at the space, the way it's been used. Everything is perfectly positioned within the space of the frame. I think it is a very, very beautiful shot. I think there have been many absolutely stunning images going on in this competition. Um, and I just want to say thank you all so much for entering. Thank you for supporting PosiPix. And thank you for helping us to support the legacy of War Foundation. They do some very, very good work. There is a link. There are links to all this good stuff in the description area below. If you want to find out more about photography, have a look. There's a link to my site and some training you can do. Links to Clickersnap, where you can upload images. Go and check out Clickersnap. Cool place. <clears throat> and, of course, the Legacy of War Foundation. As I said, we're going to be taking a December break, a Christmas holiday. Regroup, consider some new ways of doing things. So keep an eye on the PosiPix website. Keep an eye on Clickersnap. Keep an eye on my website and if you're on the newsletter we will of course keep you informed as to what's going on congratulations everybody thank you for entering i apologize for the fumbling around earlier there's nothing throws me off more than when i start broadcasting and go those sounds are not coming out why isn't this working anyway thank you so much for supporting me and being so helpful you're a lovely group of people I look forward to seeing you again soon. Be well, take care, have a fabulous Christmas. If you don't do Christmas, just have a fabulous time. Watch all the crazy Christians doing their stuff. Be well, take care. <laughs>